What's up everybody? That's trending has been the hot topic over the past month or so and with the game finally released and all the major reviewers giving us their not so insightful opinions, I thought I'd change the regular review process up a bit and focus more on what all the major outlets stated about Death Stranding and if exactly what they said was true or not. This will be my review on Death Stranding and a review on the reviews of Death Stranding, all spoiler free. I hadn't planned on reviewing this game so I did read many reviews to see the verdict. I slowly became fed up on how divisive the major review outlets were on this game and how they were able to say so much about the game yet still say so little. There were a few great and genuine reviews, but most seemed to do nothing more than kiss ass, talk about how moving of an experience it was, how they cried and laughed and cried again, slagged off most of the game and still gave it great reviews. Makes no sense whatsoever, so while being as objective as possible with no ass smooching or claim of a life altering event, here we go. So what exactly is Death Stranding? Well Death Stranding is a solo third person action walking delivery game with a heavy emphasis on story, cutscenes and cinematics based on a futuristic sci-fi kind of weird theme. Although it is a solo game, there exists an online component where your game world will change from the actions of other players. For instance, if they build a bridge to span a river in their game, chances are that that bridge may appear in your game to help you out. They can also complete deliveries of your lost packages and give aid if needed. The player never appears in your game world, however. The game encompasses deep control mechanics for traversal, inventory management, skill upgrades, equipment upgrades, world building, co-op gameplay, well, sorta, and an impactful story, however you view it. So is Death Stranding a hiking UPS simulator? Well, definitely yes, but with a weird twist, of course. Yes, you do walk, run, hike everywhere in Death Stranding. There is a ton, a ton of walking. But the game does involve more activities and modes of transportation. About 60% of this is hiking, 10% shooting and melee action, 10% driving vehicles, 10% building structures, and 10% fiddling around with menus and inventory management systems. This is the main game in a nutshell, all the playable game that is. This doesn't even account for the hours and hours of cutscenes. All in all, I finished the game while completing a small amount of side quests in just under 41 hours. Since the walking takes up most part of your time in Death Stranding, this will be the crux of the game. It will make or break it for most people. Hell, it took me two hours to deliver this lazy ass because I picked the wrong side of the mountain to hike. But you just don't walk from point A to point B like other games. The game requires you to methodically plan out your deliveries. Taking extra gear like ladders and ropes can help you out, but will add extra weight and affect your balance. Death Stranding is like a tuner game for deliveries. You need to plan out your deliveries accordingly. Death Stranding makes every step count, so a simple walk to the next safe house isn't so simple. You are a delivery man, so the more jobs you take on, the harder your journey will be. Most reviewers complained how difficult the traversal system was. It can be if you take on too many packages. But you don't always have to. Most main missions involve carrying heavy articles and if you take on additional side missions you're just making things that much harder. Throughout my playthrough I only failed a handful of missions for destroying packages from falls or trips over rocks. It is true that in the beginning of the game you will be constantly pressing the right and left triggers to keep your balance and the game can be a little bit finicky with interactions between your feet and any obstacles. Your character's movement can feel a bit wonky and out of control at times due to his momentum with regards to weight he's carrying. He doesn't always stop on a dime. Control issues arise also with vehicles which have a hard time traversing anything but flat terrain and feel floaty. The in-game description for bikes states that they are used predominantly for flat terrain, but in a game full of rocks and mountains, it makes vehicles useless for the most part. Trucks seem to fare a bit better, but it is still better to hoof it on foot most of the time. One thing that everyone agrees on is that the game is gorgeous, and it is. Watching Norman Reedus talk to himself while strolling through a valley but snow-crested mountains in the backdrop is eye-pleasing to say the least. Pissing in front of some peak straight out of Bob Ross painting is breathtaking. Without a doubt one of the best looking games on consoles and that runs like a champ on the PS4 Pro. No issues whatsoever. So how about the cutscenes and cinematics? Well there are a lot and everybody agrees on that. Everything has a cinematic and never lets up through the entire game. Luckily you can skip them. This shower scene alone has three skippable scenes and unless you have an affinity for Norman Reedus' buttocks you'll be skipping these a lot. I'm not going to show you any, but there are hours of the main story cutscenes. All of the cutscenes and cinematics are superbly done and add to the overall high quality look of the game. I recommend skipping the repeating cinematics once watched, but make sure you watch every cutscene as they tend to feed the player with important information. I missed a piece of information in one scene and it caused failure in a mission a couple of times. Most reviews stated there wasn't enough combat in the game. There actually can be plenty if you choose to fight. It's not going to be on the level of a typical shooting game, but there is enough action there to play a significant role in Death Stranding. There are plenty of lethal and non-lethal weapons which you will unlock through normal progression. 
I chose to play the game on normal difficulty to enjoy the story more and didn't have any issues with firefights or stealth while taking out terrorists or BTs, which are the main game's enemy. Running away is always an option and it is easy to do, but raising the difficulty may change this. Almost all reviews stated Death Stranding isn't a game for everyone. Well obviously that's the case for any game. Death Stranding does for walking what Need for Speed does for cars. Both are open world games with their own sense of traversal. Of course walking everywhere seems like a chore, but Death Stranding isn't simply walking. Careful preparation and inventory management is a must if you want to succeed as a delivery man. You tune your main character in this game like you would tune your car in Need for Speed. The game does open up more at about 10 hours and doesn't stop till the end. It keeps feeding you more and more gear and options to make you the delivery man everyone asks for. It is true that there is a lull of story content in the middle hours and deliveries will have you repeating routes, which is an annoying way to prolong a game. Also, anyone with babies in their house knows the pains of a baby crying, so having one in a game will probably drive some young dads and moms nuts. So now the subjective stuff. Death Stranding gets an 8.5 out of 10 and a buy now. Most people will view this game as a simple walk-in simulator, which it pretty much is. But it is a great game and experience to be had if you enjoy lonely, solo action adventure games with a touch of online cooperation. Cresting a mountain with some awesome music playing and finally seeing your package's destination is an exhilarating and relieving experience. The barren world you start off in is vastly different by the end, with the collaboration of hundreds of players adding structures to the landscapes to help make deliveries easier. So while the game is a solo game, you never truly feel alone. So remember, if you liked the review, be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Till next time, keep on gaming.